Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today I want to talk about the topic of fear. We have a lot of fears in this world that we are dealing with, um, a lot related to current events such as financial fears, uh, bank failures, food shortages, EMP attacks, the Russia-China war, and cyber attacks, among many other things. Fear is to Satan what faith is to God. Faith does God's work, but fear does Satan's work. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God operates on the basis of faith, which enables believers to resist one of the devil's chief operative tactics, which is fear. 1 Peter 5, 8-9 says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Paul explains how our faith can be fertilized and watered, writing that faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. So to conquer our fears, we need to have faith. Our faith is built upon the word of God and who God is. Now there are two main causes for fear. One is a guilty conscience. The other is a lack of trust. Two things can cause fear. Sin in your life that you haven't dealt with. Or secondly, you're afraid because you don't think God can handle your situation. Psalm 118 verse 6 says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Psalm 56 verse 11, In God I trust. I shall not be afraid. What can man do to me? Psalm 91 verse 14. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And finally, Isaiah 41 verse 13 For I the Lord your God hold your right hand it is I who say to you fear not I am the one who helps you Now let's talk about some common fears that people deal with the fear of failure when the servant of God obeys and trusts the word of God they do not need to fear failure In 1 Kings 19 uh, verses 1 through 21 it records the story of Elijah, who had just defeated Jezebel's false prophets, thus incurring the queen's scorn and wrath. Verse 2. What was Elijah's reaction? Scripture records that he was afraid and arose and ran for his life. Verse 3. Why did Elijah fear he would fail now, only after hours earlier he had exterminated several hundred of Jezebel's false prophets? Well, James 5.17 reminds us that Elijah had a nature like ours, and thus was a man of clay, subject to the same trials and failures as any believer. Yet still it seems strange that Elijah should be able to face several hundred angry prophets and not be afraid, and then run away from the threats of one woman. Certainly there may have been a physical cause to his failure, as the Mount Carmel confrontation must have wearied him. But the main cause for Elijah's failure was spiritual, for Elijah focused on the death threats of Jezebel rather than the promises of Jehovah. In every step prior to this time, Elijah had waited for God's command, but now his fear led to disobedience. He was no longer risking his life for God's glory, but instead, was trying to save his life for his own sake. In a moment of testing, the man of faith was transformed into a man of fear. Don't we all tend to react at times like Elijah did? 
Another fear that we deal with is a fear of criticism. Someone has said that if your enemy cannot fool you, he will try to frighten you. One of the ways he does it is by the use of opposition, which can paralyze us with fear. This fear can prevent us from living out the truth of Christ in us, the hope of glory, and proclaiming God's truth. Or it may lead to compromise, so that we give in in order to protect ourselves from criticism. The writer of Hebrews addresses fear of rejection and being left alone, exhorting his readers to let your character be free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. So that we may confidently say, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What shall man do to me? If you fear God, you will not fear anything else, for you are safe in the Father's hands. So live your life in such a way that God could publish a book about you, and you would not be ashamed for the whole world to read it. Live with eternity in view, and people and circumstances are less likely to make you fearful. And lastly, the fear of exposing one's weaknesses. The enemy of our soul loves tongue-tied, ineffective Christians and plays on our secret fears and inferiorities to make us one of them. We reason to ourselves, if I do a work for God and I'm where people can see me, then my weaknesses will be exposed and that would bring criticism. As a result, we are neutralized by our perceived weaknesses or shortcomings. We focus on our areas of weaknesses rather than on the truth that we can do all things through Him who strengthens us. The moment we cease relying on the sword of the Spirit, relying instead on human reasoning to conquer our fears, that is the moment we have set ourselves up for defeat. We become like a soldier who, even though involved in fierce, active combat, decides to throw away his sword and use only his hands to meet the advancing armed adversary. God gives us a powerful weapon against the spirit of fear, and that weapon is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Those who fear God most fear men least. Let me say that again. Those who fear God most fear men least. Now there is a good kind of fear, which is the fear of God. William Gurnall says we fear men so much because we fear God so little. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says the fear of the Lord is, is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. Those who fear the Lord have a continual awareness of Him, a deep reverence for Him, and a sincere commitment to obey Him. Too many people want to tame or redefine the Lord as a God that makes us feel comfortable, a permissive buddy who simply exists to bless us and give us what we want. But we will not fear Him in the way He deserves to be feared. The Lord God Almighty is far greater than that, and the fear of the Lord begins when we see Him in His majesty and power. The Lord shows Job and us a glimpse of His power in Job 38-41 through when He describes His absolute sovereignty over everything. When we have a correct fear of God, it puts into perspective all other fears. In conclusion, Oswald Chambers said, The remarkable thing about fearing God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. God bless.